Quitters never win, and winners never quit. Can you name the 10 biggest comebacks in military history? From Spanish Armadas to the Battle of Zama, we've got you covered as we count down the top 10 military comebacks of all time. Number 10, the Battles of Saratoga in the American Revolutionary War. It was 1777, and the British military hatched a plan to cut off New England from the mid-Atlantic colonies by converging on Albany with three separate armies. But the plan fell apart like a scone left in a cup of tea. One British general went rogue and abandoned the three-pronged plan, capturing the colonial capital of Philadelphia instead, which ultimately proved meaningless. The other two armies continued to Albany, but were beaten back upon arrival in a series of battles at Freeman's Farm in Saratoga. Ultimately, 20,000 British soldiers surrendered and were forced to return to England. These victories convinced the French to recognize American independence, becoming America's most pivotal ally toward victory in the war. Number 9. The Battle of Midway, World War II. After Japan's victory at Pearl Harbor, the commander of the Japanese Navy hoped to replicate their success at Midway Island. His strategy was to divert the U.S.'s attention with an attack on the Aleutian Islands off the coast of Alaska. Then, when the time was right, they would attack Midway from air, land, and sea. The twist? Crypto analysts had cracked the code of Japanese communication in early 1942, so U.S. forces knew weeks ahead of time that the Japanese were planning an attack at Midway. But despite the heads-up and additional preparation, the battle raged for several days. Japan lost more than 3,000 men, 300 aircraft, four aircraft carriers, and one heavy cruiser, while the U.S. lost 145 aircraft and 360 servicemen. After this crushing defeat, Japan abandoned its plan to power through the Pacific. The Battle of Midway was the first flare of success toward an Allied victory. Number 8. The Battle of Gettysburg after a decisive victory at Chancellorsville in Virginia, Rebel General Robert E. Lee led his army into Pennsylvania, invading the North with the hopes of earning recognition of the Confederacy from England and France. On July 1st, Lee's troops clashed with the Union Army of the Potomac outside the small town of Gettysburg to begin three bloody days of fighting. The Confederates were on the brink of victory on the second day but Union soldiers fought valiantly and managed to hold their positions. By day three, both sides were exhausted and had suffered a combined 35,000 casualties. Against desperate advice, Lee gave the order for the now legendary Pickett's Charge. 15,000 Confederate soldiers marched three quarters of a mile across open fields toward dug-in Union troops. Half of them were killed and the battle was lost. The Civil War was far from over, but many believe the Battle of Gettysburg was the turning point for the eventual Northern victory. Number 7. The Battle of Stirling Bridge After the death of King Alexander III, John Balliol was named the new Scottish King in 1292. However, Balliol had sworn homage to King Edward I of England, whose not-so-secret goal was to completely destroy the Scottish nation and bring them under English control. In response, Scottish nobles allied with Philip IV of France, causing a clash with King Edward, who stripped Balliol of power and imprisoned him in the Tower of London. Edward attempted to rule Scotland remotely, but two infamous Scottish knights, William Wallace and Andrew Murray, led an uprising against him. The Battle of Stirling Bridge took place on September 11, 1297. There, a small army of Scottish spearmen, led by Wallace, defeated the heavily armed English knights. It was the first Scottish victory over England in centuries, sparked a 32-year conflict between the nations, and was the inspiration for the movie Braveheart. Number 6. Prussia During the Seven Years' War in 1756, Prussia's king, Frederick the Great, invaded Saxony, kicking off the European side of the Seven Years' War. He scored several early victories, but was eventually outnumbered by the opposing armies of Russia, Austria, France, and Sweden. By 1760, things were looking dire for Frederick. Russian and Austrian forces occupied the Prussian capital of Berlin, and half of his army was either dead or captured. 
he was on the verge of suicide prior to what he assumed would be his army's final battle. But in what is now called the Miracle of the House of Brandenburg, the Austro-Russian forces withdrew from the city on the eve of battle. Tsarina Elizabeth of Russia had died, and her nephew, Peter III, ascended to the throne. He reversed his aunt's war policy against Prussia and offered 12,000 troops to make an alliance with Frederick. The Treaty of Habsburg was signed soon after, and peace was achieved in the region. Number 5. The Battle of Thermopylae This is the true story of 300 Spartan Greeks who fought so valiantly their story would remain legend for centuries. After several days of battle against the Persian king Xerxes and his forces, the Spartans were outnumbered and outmaneuvered. Many Greek city-states either remained neutral in the conflict or joined Xerxes out of fear. But a band of brave soldiers from Athens and Sparta led a resistance, with the most strategic battle taking place in 480 BCE. The Spartans courageously held a narrow line that constricted the battlefield and prevented Persia's massive army from advancing all at once. Creating the bottleneck proved to be a brilliant tactic, forcing the Persian army to advance through a gauntlet of sorts. 300 Spartans fought to the death against Xerxes and his men at the Battle of Thermopylae, which is still celebrated to this day as an example of an underdog fighting back against impossible odds. Number 4. The Battle of Zama In 202 BCE, the Roman and Carthaginian armies, led by Scipio and Hannibal Barca, met in the Battle of Zama, which marked the end of the Second Punic War. For 12 years, Hannibal had defeated every Roman force sent against him, and Scipio was just 24 years old. But Scipio was inspired by Hannibal's tricky war tactics and used them against him. In the past, the Roman army relied on its vast numbers and brute strength, but not this time. Hannibal's army included an elephant corps on the front lines. But Scipio tricked Hannibal by disguising his lines and using trumpets to scare off the valuable elephant corps that was infamous for charging tusk first into enemy soldiers, and the rest of the battle unraveled for the Carthaginians. At the time, Hannibal was considered truly invincible, but Scipio's victory made him one of the greatest military commanders and strategists of all time. Number 3. United Nations Forces in the Korean War In 1950, the Republic of Korea's ill-equipped armed forces numbered less than 100,000. The army had never really fought a land war, and they had a tiny air force with no combat planes. North Korea saw a surefire advantage and invaded, quickly overwhelming their southern neighbors, prompting 21 member countries of the United Nations to commit to support South Korea. Fighting units, military hospitals, and field ambulances were sent. The United States deployed 140,000 soldiers. The UN provided military direction in the war effort, and the USA patrolled the skies and seas, thwarting the aggressive actions of North Korea, which was heavily supported by China and the Soviet Union. South Korea's army swelled to more than 350,000 soldiers and recovered from earlier defeat, stabilizing the region for the most part. The war never officially ended, but decades later, South Korea remains an active part of the United Nations, keeping a watchful eye on its unpredictable neighbor. Number 2. Napoleon's Defeat at Waterloo Napoleon Bonaparte famously said, one should never interrupt your enemy while he is making a mistake. But at Waterloo, it was Napoleon's blunder that cost him the battle. In 1804, Napoleon assumed the throne in France and clashed with several Central and Western European countries. But by 1814, Paris was captured and Napoleon abdicated the throne, which began his Hundred Days campaign. One by one, his enemies would be vanquished until the Battle of Waterloo on June 18, 1815. Napoleon's army battled British forces and their allies. The British were outnumbered, but Napoleon made a strategic error. Heavy rains fell the previous night, and the muddy conditions caused a delay in Napoleon's troop movement. Waiting until midday to send in his soldiers allowed 30,000 Prussian reinforcements to arrive. A few hours cost Napoleon thousands of casualties. Waterloo would mark the end of Napoleon's military career. Number 1. The English Defeat the Spanish Armada in 1588, Pope Sixtus V gave his blessing to the conquest of England by Spain, 
hoping to bring the Protestant country back into the Catholic reach of Rome. King Philip II sailed his invincible armada toward England. The Spanish fleet was comprised of 130 ships, with 28,000 soldiers and sailors carrying 2,500 guns and other weaponry. The Spanish ships were slower than anticipated and took almost two months to reach English shores. This gave the Brits plenty of time to prepare their own ships, which were faster and armed to the hilt. Long-range weapons were critical to England's success, sinking several Spanish ships. Blasted out of formation by the British Navy, the Spanish ships were forced to retreat. Spain lost more than 15,000 soldiers, and Queen Elizabeth's defeat of the Invincible Armada made England a worldwide powerhouse. And there you have it, the top 10 biggest comebacks in military history. But what's in store for the future of military comebacks? Will a cavalry of flying cars arrive in the nick of time? Will a robot deliver rousing speech in binary code? Tune into episode 4000 and find out.